now this is the Star Media with Mahmoud Ahmed and thank you for joining us. Please remember to subscribe. If you do not score a C plus and above in your exams, that does not mean that is the end of life. You attain C play, a C minus, a D plus, a D minus. Well, in our discussion today, we will equip with you everything that you need. And with me in studio is Emily Kering. She is an educator and she's also a motivational speaker. And also with me is Osoro Hefon. He is a lecturer. Welcome to the studios. Thank you. All right, let me begin with you, Emily. You know, one is faced with a dilemma after the results are out uh, on a career to pursue. Let's begin right there, the dilemma. Okay, thank you. First, you know, once the results are out, sometimes there are those students whose uh, results are favor them. So you'll find them uh, being the ones who are happy because of the results. And then you have the other category of students whose results do not match the expectations. So when uh, such a scenario comes, you find that this student who scored maybe below his or her expectations will be on crossroads because one, let's say, for instance, this is a student who had a target of getting a B plus and above, and here the results are out, maybe he or she has scored a D plus. So the dilemma comes in when now this student has to pursue a career. Remember, when you have a B plus, the career is different. And here, you've scored a D plus, meaning your expectations will have to be lowered a bit. So uh, the dilemma comes in when now this student has to now uh, I'm sorry to use it uh, in quotes, settle for less, you know, because you find that you now have to go to a career that matches your results. And this is the dilemma because uh, you find that maybe this student wanted to, let's say, be a medic. And here, because of your results, you are not uh, favored to pursue that career. So you are here, you are stuck, you don't know which career to pursue because at first maybe you had already set your mind on one career. So the dilemma comes in here. All right, thank you, Emily, for that. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Osoro. What's your take? Well, I can say the dilemma comes in two ways. Mm -hmm. The dilemma can come from the part of uh, the student himself or herself, and also it can come as a less of expectations from the parents. Mm -hmm. So you see, if, for example, a parent uh, expects his or her son or daughter to get a certain grade and then they do don't achieve him, achieve the, the, the target, the student may feel demoralized. So as, a, as part of that, the student may feel like he or she is not wanted and then she may settle for, let, for less or may do something that uh, she, he or she did not expect. All right, so thank you, Mr. Osoro. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Emily. Uh, what, are the, what are some of the factors a student should consider before they dis before they choose a career to pursue? Thank you. First, uh, the student has to consider passion. You know, this is something that we are not taught. You find that uh, in our current uh, generation or in our nation, most students who are in campus are frustrated because they chose to do courses mm -hmm because their parents wanted them to do, which is uh, in most cases against their passion. So the first thing the student should consider is passion. Then the second thing is now the job market. Which careers are blossoming out there? You know, it's not just a matter of you going to campus and graduating, but it's a matter of you graduating and getting a job. So the most important thing is the job that is out there that is in relation to your career. Thank you. You are a lecturer, you understand these things. So what are some of the things that uh, the students should consider also before they choose a career to pursue? Well, thank you, Mohamed. Uh, as my colleague here has said, she has said that uh, one should uh, look at the passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very true. Because we are talking about something that you are going to do in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. We are talking about... 20, 30 years before one retires. Mm -hmm. uh, so you must, first of all, as a student, look at the passion. What do you like doing? Because uh, we all know that if you are being forced to do something, you cannot do that thing to your best, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So 
you must first of all, first of all look at the passion and then uh, we live in a changing uh, world so there are some courses that you may uh, pursue that may not really uh, make an impact in your life because we are living in a cha in a changing world mm -hmm. so you after looking at the passion you also look at the the way the world is working mm -hmm. so like uh, nowadays if you do the technical jobs you may find that uh, you f you you will uh, be at a position to get a job mm -hmm. other than in the, in the recent years mm -hmm. uh, well not the recent in the um past years, mm -hmm. in the past years, mm -hmm. there were some jobs that were very marketable, but you find that in the recent years they are not marketable, just because the world is changing. So uh, as much as you look at your passion, you also look at the what? At the, at the, 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 the changing times of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, before I come to Emily, Mr. Osoro, uh, let's say you, your plan was to score a C plus and go direct to the university to do a course of your choice. So maybe the students scored less. So how do you go about that? Well, you see, somebody said that uh, examination is like a football game. Mm -hmm. You may find that uh, maybe in uh, the, the, the junior years of high school, for example, form one and form two, you are very, you are scoring very highly. Mm -hmm. So you obviously expect that uh, the KCSE won't be any different. But then, uh, when the results are out, you find that you have scored very less. So the first thing that I can say is that uh, it's not the end of life. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if uh, you wanted to start uh, to study law, for example, uh, it requires you to have a C plus and above, mm -hmm. and then you must be able to have a B plane in the English language. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you don't have the C plus but you have the B plane in a uh, in, a, in maybe in, a, in the languages that is required, you can start from maybe certificate, mm -hmm. you see, certificate or a, a diploma. So even if you will work more years, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, than it was expected, if you are to score the C plus and above, you go direct to the university, mm -hmm. you can start from maybe the diploma and then uh, you, you, you work your way up. Thank you, Mr. Osoro. Let me, all right, let me come to you, Emily. Emily, let's talk about uh, career guidance or counseling of these students while they're still in school. Uh, do you have that in our schools? Yes, and I thank the government because uh, currently all the schools have their counselors. And the work of these counselors is to help students in choosing careers. This comes uh, in time when students are now choosing the subjects, you know, you know, by the time the students are in form three or form two, they have to drop some subjects. So the work of these career counselors is to help you uh, identify the subjects that will match with a certain career. For instance, you find in some schools, if a students, uh, if a, if some students, sorry, wants uh, to pursue computer science, they will be allowed to choose computer under one condition: if you are performing well in maths because there is no need of this student um, choosing computer with a dream of doing computer science when this student is scoring D's and E's. So the, the work of these career uh, counselors is to help students choose subjects based on their potential and based on the job market. All right, that's fair enough. Uh, let me come to you, Osoro. Again, where do you think as a country, uh, where have we failed when it comes to guidance and career counseling? Well, uh, I can say as a country where we have failed is where we put pressure, too much pressure to our student in scoring grades. Mm -hmm. So you see, like a, it's like a, a lion in a circus. Mm -hmm. You see, the lion will learn to sit on a table or a chair in the fear of mm -hmm. a whip. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are doing to our students. Mm -hmm. We are putting too much pressure on them to score good grades. Instead of of empowering them even to, the, to take uh, courses on technical subjects, for example. You see, like, uh, there are very few uh, uh, students who, who can uh, really venture in, for example, the agriculture business. Mm -hmm. You see, it's because we, have, we haven't really uh, emphasized more on the technical uh, subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's fair enough. Uh, uh, let me come to you, Emily. Uh, Emily, let's talk about the roles that our parents play when it comes to choosing a career for their children. 
Thank you. First of all, I'll say uh, when it comes to choosing career, you have two categories of students here. You have those who come from the upper social class and those from the lower social class. So the people who benefit here when it comes to career choice are those from the upper social class because, or rather middle class, because these are the students who are coming from a background where parents are educated. So you know when parents are educated, they will motivate their children to settle on good careers. And thi this will start from the foundation when the children are growing when they are now in high school. From the foundation, the students are already taken through a whole uh, process of uh, the good careers that are out there. And like this other student here, there's another student, uh, he called the student uh, category B. This is a student from, um, from a lower social class. Uh, a, a, a student who is coming from a background whereby parents are not educated. So you find this child will not be favored because this is a child who has been taken to school to acquire skills and then from there better her life or his life. So the parents hardly play a bigger role of uh, trying to encourage them to settle on a course because them themselves are not educated. So they know nothing about uh, career things. So, uh, but basically we can say uh, the role of our parents when it comes to to choice of career is to guide the student to choose on a career that is marketable, a career that is um, that is worth pursuing. You know, nowadays you have students who want to go to campus just to go. You know, uh, being identified or associated with being in campus is an achievement to some. So the work of the parents is to help them settle on a good career. Thank you. Uh, well, that's fair enough. Uh, let me come to you uh, also on the same thing. Uh, the role of our parents when it comes to choosing a career? Yeah, uh, parents have a very great role to play uh, in uh, terms of choosing uh, or guiding their students, uh, uh, their children rather, mm -hmm. in choosing of uh, careers. But you find that uh, uh, we as parents have really uh, failed because you find that uh, there's that uh, process that is already set, mm -hmm. like you see, uh, a student goes to maybe primary school, and then high school, and then college, and then find a, a good job. There's no, there's no, there's really not that option. What if this student doesn't maybe go to university? Mm -hmm. You see that you find that there's that competition among parents, which is not beneficial to the what to the to the to the to the learners. You you find that for example, parent A is a lawyer by profession, and then there's parent B who is maybe a doctor. So you find that these two parents have competition in with, with, their, with, their, with their children. So you find that they are mounting that pressure instead of uh, allowing them to live their life. Yeah. But then what we should be doing as parents is guiding our, 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 our students because we do, they don't have uh, the same capabilities. You see, we, we have many things that are contribute to uh, maybe a, learn, a learner or a student uh, being successful. You find that there's the, the environment, you find there's the, 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 the environment that the learner is brought up, you find that maybe the, the, the teachers, many things that contribute to the success, uh, the successful uh, bringing up of a child. So we as parents, I can say that we have a, a big role in uh, influencing our, 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 our children or our, our learners in the career choice that they will. Uh, choose later, but I can say that we have greatly failed. Uh, all right, yeah. thank you, Mr. Osoro. Uh, let me come to you, Emily, before we finish. Share with our audience uh, two or three marketable courses that a student with a D plus, a C minus can do. Number one, I can say education. I'm an educator and I can say for free that being a teacher, you'll never go wrong. Because remember, uh, we are in a nation that is dependent on education. So in each and every day, students are, uh, children are born. So education is a continuous process. So for a student who has scored a C plane, that's not the end of you. You can join P1, where, whereby you can be trained to be a primary teacher. Or you can as well uh, uh, join to be an early childhood developer teacher, isn't it? Yeah, so they still hope for you. You can as well uh, join tertiary institution and uh, pursue agricultural engineering. By the way, um, among the agenda for agriculture is among them. So if you choose a career related to agriculture, I can assure you that in the next five years to come, you'll be among the few millionaires in the country. Another one is sales and marketing. A student can uh, decide to pursue a, a career uh, 
and a business uh, department, let's say diploma in sales and marketing, human resource, you can talk about procure procurement, sorry. So there are uh, huge opportunities out there. So uh, to any student who is there and you feel like the whole world is crumbling, kindly have hope, the careers are out there. Just find information from the right sources. Do not be swayed, thank you. Uh, uh, right, I understand. Yeah, this is a conversation that won't end today. And because of time, uh, let me ask, uh, let me come to you, Osoro. Your final message? Well, uh, there's still hope. There's still hope. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, you maybe don't uh, achieve your targets, that's not the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of life. You find that uh, this is the pressure that we put to our students, and then you find some of them can't handle this pressure, and then you find some of them committing suicide or doing things that we have not we we will have uh, maybe prevented mm -hmm. so i can say for uh, students listen to your heart listen to your heart mm -hmm. parents have already lived their life mm -hmm. they already have their life so you can just uh, live your life mm -hmm. there are many 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 career choices that uh, you can choose for example as my colleague has said mm -hmm. you can do a course maybe in ecd or p1 I can also add uh, like uh, in agriculture for example if you have uh, you if you have skills in agriculture you can start a small uh, small business mm -hmm. for example but with the right uh, skills you can be able to even surpass the one who went to university for example you can also take a course maybe for example in a uh, in the tourism in the industry you find that uh, we have very many uh, tourists uh, entering our country mm -hmm. so you can if you take a course in tourism for example you can be decide to have to be a chef for example you can also be uh, a tour guide so you find that these courses they really don't need very uh, students to have maybe for example a a, a grades or b grades with a, a c pl a c minus a c plane or even a d you can uh, enroll uh, in these courses and then you find that you will be more successful in future yeah uh, well that's fair enough uh, emily your final message i'll tell all students out there going to university or not going doesn't mean it's the end of life and rather, it doesn't mean that if you go to a tertiary institution, you are lesser than that who has gone to a university. The most important thing is all about acquiring skills. It doesn't matter where you acquire from, be it a college, be it a tertiary institution, being a university. The most important thing is that you are going there to acquire skills so that you can elevate poverty. So we are fighting poverty. We are not competing against each other. Just have that spirit. Just remain motivated. Just uh, remain focused. And at the end of the day, remember, as it's always said, the journey of a thousand miles begin with one step. Take that step and see yourself soaring high. Thank you. Uh, all right, fair enough. Uh, and on that note, we come to the end of our discussion today. Uh, thank you, Emily and Osoro, for making time for us here at the Star Media. Uh, please remember to subscribe, comment, and share. And until then, remember, mother is always right.